Blessed be the name of the Lord. By the grace of our Lord. Let us read from Chronicle second. Let us read from Chronicle seven, is the second and chapter twenty. Chapter twenty, Chronicle second and verse one. Actually, v verse 12. Chronicles 2, chapter 20, and verse 12. O oh God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what we do, what to do, but our eyes are upon you. O oh, the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood there before the Lord. <clears throat> then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. He said, Listen, King Je Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeriel. You will, ha you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm and see. The deliverance the Lord will give you, all Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korathites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with very loud voice. Early in the morning they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, of Jeho After consulting the people Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and praise him for the splendor of his holiness. As they went out, at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord sent ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Sire, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men from Mount Sire to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men of Sire, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying in the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder, and they found among them a great among of amount of equipment and clothing, and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. On the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Beraka, where they praise the Lord. This is why it is called the valley of Beraka to this day. And Beraka means praise. I mean. that valley the valley of Berka where Berka means in Hebrew means praise but it was easy to see and understand that for the Israelites that would be their demise that very valley would be their death however now we see the difference that this valley has now in the eyes of Israelites because the Lord helped and upheld them and he did so for the people that are looking up for the Lord 
a vast amount of uh, a vast army that was attacking the people of Judah um, the king the king of whom was Jehoshaphat that mathematically they were not able to win this war everything seems to come to an end there's no human hope to set yourself upon there's no way for the the for the people of Judah to overtake that vast army that was coming against them and as they see them coming they were afraid now Jehoshaphat was blessed by God previously but now he's finding himself in a very unique situation a situation that is bringing him in a grave position and every single person when he sees the danger approaching he is prone to be afraid the problem is not if you're gonna be afraid because you are going to be afraid because you're a human after all the point is what are you doing when you are in this position the fear will come how are you combating the fear how are you managing and Jehoshaphat was afraid did he run away though did he try to find a common ground with the enemy did he was he saddened he was afraid indeed but he gave himself to ask for the voice of his Lord and he called for fast uh, all the people of Jerusalem to fast and there's only one cure to fear and that is hope that is the hope and the, you asking from the Lord to appear and give you an answer because the word of the Lord says that I called upon the Lord and he came down and visited me and he delivered me from all evil he visited me personally he he spoke a word and it happened he made thing he moved things around and he saved me I cried out to the Lord and from and he delivered me and from all my fears he rescued me I'm not sure what you're afraid of today but I can tell you that there's only one who can help you through them and that's Jesus Christ there's no other there's no done situation there's no there's no end to any situation he's powerful to give the answer to any situation you have in your life and you won't believe what he's able to do and now in the midst of his fear Jehoshaphat gave himself in exalting and waiting for the Lord to reply when you see what seems to be fear and danger coming towards you you don't need to do many things you just need to go to prayer and fasting he who through his fears goes into prayer and fasting he's already under the guidance of God and the protection of God already his issue is not his issue but rather is now the issue of God and he said I asked I cried out to the Lord and he delivered me from all my fears in a different verse in another verse the word of the Lord says about a different prophet asking for the Lord to reply and the more he was asking about it the more he was receiving because asking and crying out to the Lord draws God near and he allows him to be powerful in your life when you're afraid do not go back when you're afraid kneel down and pray when the Lord found himself in fear he was praying even more but will I be able to find him if I ask him I see the danger approaching I'm afraid and I'm not sure what to do 
If I ask from from the, for the Lord, will I find Him? And the word of the Lord says that they cried out to Him with all their power, and they found Him, and He gave them rest. Is He not going to do the same for you? And Apostle Paul knows very good that God is able to provide you with anything you need. Jehoshaphat now knows all of those things, but he has to experience them too. We know that the Lord can do anything, but we have to experience it. We technically know that the valley we see as our demise is going to be transformed into praise. The only point, the only need, thing we need to do is pray and ask for it. Because whatever is written in the, in the Word of the Lord is not for some people in the past, but is written for you today. And this Word is written for you today. You're brought here by the Lord because He wants to tell you that if you're afraid, ask for my help and I will make sure that you have it, that I will bring you a delivery. Bring to me your weakness. Exactly what Jehoshaphat did. Be sure to imitate what the people you read through in the Bible did. Jehoshaphat is an example that we need to be aware of when we are in the midst of fear. And Jehoshaphat says, Oh our God, will you not judge me in verse 12? That's what he says. For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. We have no power. How is Jehoshaphat drawing near to God? He's not drawing near to God with the, rem with the remembrance of his successful years as a king. He is blessed indeed, but he's not going that way. He's not going ahead to tell the Lord how good he is and how holy he is, that he remained faithful of the, all of these years. He's not even drawing near to God, reminding God how just his petition is, saying to God that we are right there wrong. That's not the way forward, but rather... He is drawing near by accepting one thing, and that thing is his complete weakness. He's drawing near, holding as a flag his weakness. And that is why the word of the Lord says, and it is very important for us to draw near to God, exactly like the people that draw near to God and God visited them. Be because the spiritual life has some spiritual rules that cannot be changed. No matter what the situation in your life is, there are spiritual rules that cannot be undone. When you draw near to God in weakness, the power of God is going to be transforming. It's going to be shining in your life. And the word of the Lord says, Oh my God, you brought rain to your descendants and in their weakness you gave them rebirth in their weakness you brought them rebirth are you drawing near with weakness the reign of God is going to come down on you and he's going to reborn you and we read in the Bible elsewhere that God is going to judge his people He's going to excuse his, his servants when he sees that his power is lost. When he sees his servants full of weakness, without any sign of boasting. So when he sees you in weakness and you, that they and they and you today have no power, then he will be acting in the life and he will bring everything upside down. Do you believe that God is able to do all of that? Turning everything upside down is only going to be done to the people that are proclaiming the weakness. 
by understanding their personal inability to follow God. And Paul is in weakness, of course, as we see that an angel is brought specifically to strike him with and make him weak. And he prayed to God many times and God replied back that my grace is enough for you because my power is is magnificent when you are weak and there's a mechanism if we may say that will bring down the mercy of the Lord and the grace of the Lord and that mechanism is the understanding and the proclaiming of our weakness in the church of Philadelphia the Lord is going to say to the pastor of the church and he's saying the same thing to us today that I set in front of you an open door why would I set an open door in front of you I did that because you have no power you kept my word and you did not hesitate to proclaim my name therefore I opened a gate for you I gave you the ability to speak for my name and people for people to be saved through it I gave you the ability to pray for other people and all of that not because you are able not because you're wise none of the above but rather because you have weakness and you know that you are weak and you're coming forward with this realization therefore we must proclaim that we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us and second the first is that he's drawing near by accepting his weakness and the second is by Jehoshaphat saying that we do not know what to do let us draw near to God today in that way we do not know what to do I'm not able to make to understand what is going on I do not know what to do and I came to you so that you can reveal to me because that's the point of prayer for you to go to the Lord and tell him that I don't know what to do I didn't come to the to I didn't start praying to tell you what you need to do in my life but I'm asking you to do what you want to do in my life and for an, if for any reason your prayer has been transformed into a place of oblivion where you're not reaching forward it that is because you went to that place and you tried to speak to the Lord and tell him what he needs to do and of course the Lord is not replying And because of that, he's not going to the, to pray anymore because he's not receiving. But the fact of the matter is that the Lord is replying, is able to reply, but he's not because he's asking for his own desires. Example given, I decided to do this and I'm coming forward so that you may be able to confirm and bless my decision but my dear brethren we're not gonna go to the prayer to pray telling the Lord what he needs to do but rather let us go and pray and say to the Lord please write in my heart what your desire is I don't wanna want anything all I want is for you to tell me what you want me to do I didn't come for to tell you what you need to do in my life but I'm waiting for your voice to confirm what I need to do in my life I disregard my wisdom and my power and my hope is set only on you and now that I'm in this very path that I'm walking in I'm waiting for you to give me guidance because we do not know what to do let us tell that to the Lord today we do not know what to do but you are a believer so many years you speak about the word of the Lord still I don't know what to do but you have so many experiences we still do not know what to do the, de the dead end that we have in front of us is bigger than us and we are weak and not only are we weak but we do not know what to do 
how is it possible for the Lord to not visit that person how is it possible for the Lord to not reply to that person he he has some fighting capacity still he he is proclaiming himself to be weak and some may say why would you say you're weak with small amount of armies the people of Israel were able to be victorious is it the first time that the people of Israel will be fighting against biggest bigger armies and in the Old Testament we've seen many different occasions where the people of Israel were not as many as their enemies and they still won and even though Jehoshaphat knows all of that even though he himself is a very able king he goes in front of the Lord forward and he says to the Lord and he proclaims his weakness because we do not have the power to face this vast army that is attacking us but also we do not know what to do however he's closing up by this saying this but our eyes are upon you we are taking our eyes away from our own selves from our own selves and away from our own opinions and away from any different any other person that is trying to guide us and we are turning our eyes to the only one who's able to save us and that is Jesus Christ our eyes are upon you O oh Lord we're not expecting anything from anyone I'm in weakness I do not know what to do however I now only see you and I don't see anyone or anywhere else and that is the prayer that Jehoshaphat did however we see different things be involved as well and that is in verse 13 all the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord all together as we in verse 13 with the little ones brother where's your wife with your little one they were sleeping you reply in the midst of the prayer they were sleeping she is a bit sick but exactly because the little one has is a bit sick you're gonna bring that little one to the prayer to the church and they were a bit exhausted and if the little one doesn't sleep in the midst of the day he's not gonna sleep during all night but that is exactly why you're gonna bring your family to the church and anyone who understands that their soul is in danger then all together they are where they need to be and that is in the crying out to the Lord asking for the presence of the Lord all the men of Judah stood there before the Lord and they're waiting for what they were waiting for the presence of the Lord and then and let us become people that are standing waiting for the Lord altogether having th the following characteristics one knowing our weakness two knowing that we do not know what to do and third that we are not waiting anything from anyone but only the one who's, who's who bought us by his own blood all the men of Judah with the wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord Jehoshaphat know, knows what he's doing why is he bringing the wives and children the little ones in front because he's drawing near to God by proclaiming and accepting their weakness he is bringing forward the people who are not able to fight telling the, to the Lord that we are not the people with the shields and the spears but rather we are the ones with the wives and children and the little ones so in other words are you going forward to the Lord so that he may pity you yes I'm going forward so that may the Lord pity me 
and that is why we read in verse 14 then the spirit of the lord came upon the hassel when when everyone stood together before the lord proclaiming not their abilities nor nor their successes however inst instead they were carrying on the the acceptance of their weakness and the understanding that they do not know what to do and then the spirit of the lord came upon jehaziel the prophet when is the spirit going to come to you when he, the spirit finds a person that accepts his weakness and for that person to also understand that he doesn't know what to do if those two things you truly understand in your prayer it's a matter of time for the Lord to reply I don't know how there are many different reasons but I know that if you have those two characteristics you you have the two things that are drawing the grace of the Lord on his people so that the spirit can speak to you at the right moment just before collapsing because the Lord is not going to allow you to collapse if you draw near to God with weakness believing that we are weak and truly mean understanding that we do not know what to do not having a second plan or plan B or plan C but the only thing you know to do is accept that you do not know what to do and only then the spirit of the Lord came to upon Jehaziel as he stood in the assembly because the talents of the spirit is are not a personal matter but are going to be given to the people that are standing in the assembly that is why when you hear prophecies you have to discern discerning is something that the church needs to has to have it's not for someone to profess to call someone on the phone and start prophesize prophesizing but rather something that you need to do in the middle of the church and for the other people to discern the same thing happened with Paul and Silas or Barnabas if I do remember correctly as they were serving and fasting the spirit told them set aside Paul and Barnaba for my work because the Lord is going to speak in the middle of the assembly and when you come to the assembly come praying so that the Lord can speak to you not only via the Word of God but also through the prophecies and it's good for you to come prepared for you to enter the church already being fully fooled filled with the Holy Spirit in on the road as you come in in as you come into church speak in tongues you're gonna come in the church already with your hope set up and the word of the Lord is gonna come and strengthen it that is the, what the Lord is doing he's speaking to the people who have prepared themselves for it that is why we have the prayer for seven th from 7.30 to 8.30 the reason for that is that you should not so in the middle of thorns however you need to sow in the good ground that is the the spirit of the lord that is going to come in the prayer and is going to help you fix your threshing floor imagine the spirit as a hammer who is breaking up the rocks in your threshing hold so that when the message of the Lord comes to the prophet and he speaks to you to find to find a good ground for the seed to fall in and that's not something you you have to do in there's no rules when it comes to that in the church however you need to if you understand that your soul is in danger and when you hear the messenger of the Lord speaking know that he's just a messenger but this discerning cannot be done unless you understand and you prepare yourself 
but uh, once you prepare yourself your heart is going to be filled up by the spirit it's going to be burning up as the two disciples said when they were walking all the way back to the village when Christ was crucified so when you are ready you're going to receive the word of the Lord telling to your brother that the word of the Lord is speaking actually to me personally that is the fellowship of the brothers that is the point of the church for you to see it down and listen to the word of the Lord of course the prophets need to be in the position because if they're not you're going to be in trouble and it is very important for us to be here from 7.30 having the talent of prophecy because it is written that he who is watering he will be watered as well come early to the church come to the church earlier and pray imagine if early in the morning the about eight or nine prophets are found in there they're going to just be prophesying themselves but next Sunday you're going to see that more and more people are going to be added and the Lord is going to speak to all people now the word of the Lord says Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. He's speaking, he's speaking to the people living in Jerusalem and Judah. Would you like for the Lord to speak to you through the message that you're hearing today? The Lord is speaking to those who live in Judah and Jerusalem. We also read in the word of the Lord that I, that I asked for one thing, and that thing is for me to dwell in the presence of the Lord because only then I'll be able to see his goodness only then he will be able to reveal the mysteries of my heart to me and that is what the presence of the Lord is doing in your life blessed is the man who is found dwelling in front of the throne of God because I will be able to call upon the name of the Lord and he will reply and he will be replying back and all of a sudden you're going to receive the message you are searching for and that should be your spiritual life or else you're going to be coming and living because you are now you're now used to it but rather this is an adventure for you it's not possible for you to be bored when you're speaking with the Lord you cannot be bored because you are prepared you come in the church and you're already filled by the Spirit allow the Spirit through the speaking of tongues to fill you up and all of a sudden you're going to receive the message and that is why we're reading the, the letter to Ephesians as someone is dressing up the armor of the Lord and we've read all the different parts of that armor that the warrior needs to be dressed up in. But how you're gonna be how you're gonna be doing that by praying through the spirit. It's not very important for us to speak in foreign tongues. Others say that it's not for for the spirit to give foreign tongues, but what is? pray and allow the Spirit to build you up and you're gonna see that the Spirit is gonna fill you up and as you're doing that as you're praying in tongues is what is dressing you with the armor of Christ because the Spirit is confirming with our spirit that we are um, created in accordance to Christ and after you are dressed the armor of the Lord then the only thing remaining is for you to receive the sword of the Lord and the sword is the word and the word is what the Lord is going to tell you in your praying corner and the word of the Lord is that sword however the ancient Greek text 
says that it's not just a word but rather the text is referring to a verbal word being told to you can we say amen to the word of the Lord and do you understand how important it is for the word of the Lord to let you know of what's going to happen tomorrow that is what the spirit is doing in your life that is the result of the higher place and that commandment of the Lord is a sword against the desires of the spirit disagreement disadvantages sudden spirit this because the Holy Spirit is like a sword that is cutting sin off and that is what is happening in the middle of the prayer and may the Lord allow us to experience all the things that we're in the word of the Lord because the Spirit has given all of those, all of those things and is ready to give us those things but have to ask it and that is why we need to be filled by the Holy Spirit and all of a sudden in the, in the assembly the Lord is going to come it's going to give you a word and this is what the Lord says to you and listen he says before King Je Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem we see something different here something mag magnificent the spirit is speaking in the assembly He's speaking to the, all the people, but also he, the Spirit is speaking personally to King Jehoshaphat. That is why it is important for us to be all together in the prayer beforehand, all the church. And as the Spirit is speaking, it's going to speak generally, but also personally. If someone comes and greets you in your workplace saying, Hi, with your name, you understand that he's speaking to you personally but the Lord is doing the same thing to you because the shepherd is going to call each sheep by its name when I used to be a regular in the church of Kifisya I was in a gathering with the youths it was about 99 and I was furious at someone I didn't speak bad to him but I was very furious and angry that was 20 years ago and I was saddened because I knew that I I saddened the Lord because I was angry at him and I said to myself what what kind of a Christian are you what kind of a person are you you're not able to be fixed. I was darkened and I went to a house that the the youth were gathered to pray and I knelt down. No one knew anything. And I said to the Lord, Do you love me? Please speak to me by my name because what happened in in the morning I wanted to be gone and it was less than five minutes and a prophecy came up and the prophecy the prophet the prophet told me my son with my name know that I love you and whatever you disregard I will draw this away from you and this is what we need to experience and this is what the Lord wants us to experience for the Lord to speak to us generally but also specifically do not be afraid or discouraged and now the Lord speaks to all of us and when the Lord speaks every man should be silent and the Lord is going to speak where the assembly is in an assembly that know its weakness and that the people of the assembly know that they do not know anything and the word of the Lord will tell them that do not be afraid or discouraged you that are coming cl closer to me with that desire understanding your weakness and accepting that you do not know especially you do not be afraid do not be disguised because of this vast army because your this battle is not yours anymore but it's of God's 
if you go to the Lord and you let him know of your issues and problems you you accept your weakness from that moment on you know that your battle is not yours anymore but God's tomorrow in verse 16 tomorrow march down against them you're only gonna do one thing you're not gonna even fight but you're only gonna do one thing you have to march down against you against them you have to be at the place you are fearing of being they will be climbing up by the pass of Z's when the Lord is speaking he, the, the, he, the Spirit, when the Spirit is speaking it is speaking specifically telling you what telling them what they need to do now what is happening now now the enemies are climbing up by the pass of Z's the prophet is seeing everything in front of him and he's letting the people know And it's the vision of the Lord that allows the prophet to see them. And he's enabled now to see their enemies. And also the Spirit lets them know what will happen tomorrow. And you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jericho. And that is what the Spirit is doing in your life. As long as you draw near with absolute weakness and hope. And truthfully understanding that we do not know what to do. You're not going to fight this fight. But I will. The only thing you need to do is to be present. And see what I will do for you. You need to go where you don't want to be. Where you fear to be. And at that point is where God is going to bless you. Amen.